I think his uh, the will to win and his hunger at this stage of his career is going to overcome a really very good veteran in Carlos Rios. But that will all play itself out. Let's take a look at the uh, numbers now as these two fighters stack up against each other. Robbie Peden and Carlos Rios. Take a look at the record. Unblemished for Peden and a very excellent record for Rios. Those three losses only to world champions. You take a look down the rest of the way. The reach advantage is where uh, Peden has a, a good, a solid at number in his corner, 68 inches to only 62 for Carlos Rios. So we are ready for action. 12 rounds, it's an NABF title fight. Let's go into the ring now and our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, we're having a little bit of trouble with uh, Jimmy Lennon Jr.'s microphone right now, so the fighters will have to wait a few more moments while they try to get that attended to. I'm sure there's a bit of uh, nervousness, although you really can't tell in the corner of uh, Robbie Peden. He's all businesslike over there. Very intent look on his face. He's got a good corner, too, uh, going for him in this uh, fight with Roger Bloodworth, Kevin Berry. And very, very active as a professional in 1999, trying to march up the ladder rapidly if he can. Both fighters having to wait. They're looking over at us, in fact. <laughs> I don't think they realize that uh, Jimmy Lennon Jr.'s microphone, not up to snuff. Now I think we got it ready. Let's go up to Jimmy and get the ring introductions. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to our featured bout of the evening, brought to you by America Presents matchmaker Thomas Brown. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the North American Boxing Federation. The supervisor in attendance is Sam Macias, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners are Amy Ayub, Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, and Dr. Luther Mack with the executive director, Mark Ratner. Introducing to you our judges scoring this title bout from ringside, Cindy Barton, Vince Delgado, Dave Moretti, and our referee in charge of the bout, Vic Dreculich. All right, fans, here we go. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the New Frontier Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, it's time for the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the NABF Super Featherweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with yellow trim, joining us all the way from Santa Fe, Argentina. He weighed in at a ready 129 pounds, with a record of 48 wins, three losses and two draws. He has 30 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Carlos Rio. trunks with white trim, fighting out of Big Bear, California, by way of Brisbane, Australia. He weighed in at a ready 128 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 15 wins, no losses, nine of his wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the IBF number three ranked super featherweight in the world, introducing Robbie, the bomber Peden. Once again, Vic Draculich is our referee in charge. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. All right, gentlemen, this is for the NABF Super Featherweight title. You've received your instructions addressing them. At this time, are there any questions? Any questions from Chief Seconds? All right, remember, obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up now. Good luck to both of you. All right, we get ready now for this 12-rounder. This one, remember, is for an NABF uh, championship, so it will be fought under the uh, unified rules of the Association of uh, Boxing Commissions. There is no three-knockdown rule, no standing eight count. A fighter can't be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. Only the referee has the ability to stop the fight, and if the fight is, uh, has to be stopped due to a headbutt, well, then they'll go to the cards at the end of four rounds. Prior to that, it's a technical draw. Round one, Heaton in the black trunks, Carlos Rios in the blue trunks with the gold trim. 
Interesting uh, matchup between the two, and the first good punch is thrown by Robbie Peden. Good, strong, crisp right hand. You know, you set the pace of the fight right there. Robbie Peden comes out and lands that big right hand. Look at that uppercut. Peden, a lot of pressure from him early. Yeah, right to business is Robbie Peden banging to the body and the head, and I think Rios might be a little shocked here from this opening salvo of punches from Robbie Peden. Wasn't quite sure what to expect. We've seen Peden twice on our telecast, and he has been very impressive on each occasion. But Carlos Rios has never seen him. He said he's a good fighter, he heard. And uh, he said he's tough, that he heard. The fight plan was just to keep the pressure on, not look for a KO. But he says, I'm going to use these early rounds, Carlos Rios says, to feel him out, to see what he's got. Well, he's, uh, feeling Robbie Peden out. He knows he's got some good punches. Remember now, Rios has fought twice for world championships. He is uh, currently trying to regain a high rating. Heard him talk about wanting to be higher rated. He's rated number 13 right now in the world. Robbie Peaton has already gained an IBF rating of number three after just uh, 15 fights. But uh, we always take those uh, ratings with a little bit of a grain of salt. Great kid. Robbie Peaton really wants to learn and wants to be a better fighter. They call him the bomber. They call him the bomber because he has hard punches. This is a guy who went through an unbelievable uh, tragedy, at a, or near tragedy anyway, at his, at his uh, home, uh, uh, Sean. Hard to believe that he had to fend off a home invasion. The guy broke into his home back in July of 1999 while he was asleep in bed and beat him with a baseball bat. Scary thought. But he's certainly not gun shy in the ring, is he? Not at all. <laughs> he wants the, uh, the intruder in the ring. Undaunted. A lot of confidence from Rod Robbie Peden. Knows he will soon be world champion. Bit of blood from the right nostril of Carlos Rios. Very fast start in round one for Robbie Peden. Peden needs business, man. He is uh, all fight here in round number one. Really tight in this first round. Look how wide the punches of Rios are. Peden represented Australia in the Olympic Games in 1992 and in 1996. And this considered a major step up in class uh, for him, but uh, at least through the first three minutes of this bout, he has more than handled it. Referee Vic Draculich getting between the two, pushing them apart. And oh, a bit of a takedown there by Robbie Peden. And Rios looking to Draculich for a little bit of help about that. It's the end of round one, a very good round for Robbie Peden. Well, he started off this round and this fight extremely strong, like he, I knew he would. A lot to prove, and here he comes on the attack. Good combinations from Robbie Peden. He goes under and over with his shots. Trying to go to the outside, trying to protect on the outside is Rios. And the end of the round, it was Peden keeping the pressure on, even trying to use his upper body to throw his opponent down. All right, let's take a look at the uh, scouting report. Now, first of all, on Carlos Rios. Well, Carlos is a brawler. He throws wide punches. He is durable, only stopped on cuts one time, and his only losses to world champions, Mayweather, Luisito, Espinosa, and Cesar Soto. Tonight, uh, he's going up against Robbie Peden, who is hoping to be a world champion. He has survived a life-threatening break-in, so he's overcome near tragedy. He is a straight-ahead brawler with a strong will to win. Will he win tonight? That's still yet to be determined. He had a really good first round. Off to a good start. He's hoping to pick that up in the second round. Look at the pressure from him once again in the second. On the attack. Rio's hoping to get this into the later rounds if he can, but uh, Peden hoping to just overwhelm him here if he can uh, early. Peden has never been beyond eight rounds. Robbie Peden, we told you about that situation at his home. Asked him about it. He's not shy about talking about it. Robbie Peden explains what happened. Um, September last year, I went home um, to Australia, visit my family and friends for a two-week break, and I um, came home one night and a guy broke into my house that morning, early that morning, and um, beat, me a beat me with a stick. It was um, pretty traumatic. I had 55 stitches, a fractured knuckle, fractured kneecap, and um, like about 17 scar wounds over my body. Well, Sean, that's, that's an unbelievable nightmare to have to go through. It's really it? terrible. Apparently, he came down, he walked downstairs, and he was covered with blood. His mother 
he, he approached his mother, and his mother just went hysterical. I mean, her own son being, you know, bleeding and being, having been beaten up by this uh, bat. Terrible that he had to go through that. But he says it has made him a stronger person, and he's going to show us that. He showed us that in the first round. Perhaps taking a little bit of aggression out on Carlos Rios. We asked him if he'd like to get that guy in the ring who did that to him in his home. He said, nah, I'll let the judicial system <laughs> take care of it. Carlos Rios. Good right hand by uh, Peden, and Rios just can't get started here. He, he, nah, it's still early yet. You know what? Championship fights, they don't start to the third round for most veterans. Now, I know Peden wanted to start this fight early. He wanted to get out there and show us that he has enough to be a champion. And uh, he certainly has done that through the first two two rounds. Now halfway into the second round, Pete got into boxing because his dad Brian was a coach. He said he followed him to the gym when he was four or five years old. His first fight at 10 years old, he would go 130 and only 15 losses in the amateurs. Yeah, five-time Australian national yeah. champion, and we mentioned the Olympic Games that he. Uh, Participated in Barcelona 92, Atlanta 96. 65 international fights, 58 wins in the international competition. Really yeah, an accomplished fighter. Good jab from Peden. Peden a lot of good skills, but look at his hands down by his waist, kind of like Kostya Zhu. You know how Zhu keeps his hands down by his waistline? What do you think of that, though? And there is, is it a dangerous situation, the way that, that he attacks? Is he being control reckless? Of a fight like this. Is he you being know, reckless? No, not, not, not at this point. Still early in this fight, but he's still leading. All right, so Rio's trying to wake up and come to life here as we come to the end of round two. Don't forget, fans, Fox Sports News is the place to be for you to get all the day's scores, highlights, and breaking stories nightly at 10 p.m. and midnight on Fox Sports Net. This is round number three of our main event, a 12-round junior lightweight uh, bout, NABF championship on the line, 30 pounds, that is, and uh, the two fighters exchange right hands. Earlier tonight, we saw an interesting uh, bout and a surprise to many when Santiago Samaniego defeated a previously undefeated Masolino Masoi, stopping him in five rounds. Here tonight, Robbie Peden trying to take the big step up. Here's Peden with uh, 15 fights. It's almost the exact situation that, for example, that a David Reed took against Felix Trinidad. And, uh, you know, sometimes it turns into disaster, and as it, as it did for Reed against Trinidad, when Trinidad's experience w was too much. Now we will see if that same kind of situation, although Rios is not a Trinidad, but still, he's got a sure. lot more fights against world champions. A lot of experience. And you know what? In my career, my little career that I had, you, you really don't know if you can take that next step until you actually do it. Sometimes you take that step and you fall down the stairs, and you realize, hey, I got I to gotta rebuild. I got to start all over again. But you gain the experience. If you don't have that experience, no matter how many times they tell you what to do, you, you don't listen. We're going to put a stop to this right now. You, <laughs> you, don't, you don't listen to this point, you get knocked out. Or you, get, you get beat. Well, hopefully the two fighters listen to uh, referee Vic Draculich there. He's warning the two of them. They were both hitting on the break. Keep the punches up. Keep the punches up. Let's go. Well, very dirty fight because both of them coming forward rapidly. And there's a swelling now. A mouse underneath the right eye of Carlos Rios, and he's beginning to bust up a little bit. His face definitely showing the scars of battle here early. Yeah, and that shows you the effects of those big punches from the bomber. Heaton. You know, Peden, when, when he uses it, his jab, Sean, is pretty nice. I mean, it's, it's good and stiff and out there. It's stiff. He does a nice job of pronating the blow. He steps in with it, putting his weight behind it. Watch your head, says Vic Dracula. Come that head again. Let's go. Fuck! None of that. Not really intentionally using his head. Carlos Weirs, when he comes in, he comes in with his head in front of his hands. Watch when he advances. You really got to go in behind your guard to not only protect yourself, but also protect your opponent from getting headbutted. Weirs does a nice job of keeping his chin down, really tucking the chin. I'd like to see him throw more of those over and under shots over the top and underneath. You can just tell Peden really feels he's in control. He's walking down, walking in, trying to walk down Rios, hands down, throwing the jab out. Peden thinks he's in control. Peden asserts that.
that control. All right, as we start round four, take a look at this headbutt in round number three. Big collision of heads between the two. And uh, boy, Rios was far the worse on that one as uh, Peden brought his head up. They were also hitting on the break. Things were very rough in round number three. Lots of extra curricular activities going on between the two. Three good rounds, it would seem, for Robbie Peden, the Australian with only 15 fights as a professional. And yet he's uh, taking it to Carlos Rios. Rios had wanted to get this fight into the later rounds. He's going to have to get off the dime here, I think. Now over in the corner of Carlos Rios is uh, Sean O'Grady. Let's find out what's going on, Sean. Thank you, Rich. Rich. I'm over, over here, and they're talking about going to the body in this corner. Miguel Diaz, why do you want Rios to go downstairs to the body? Well, we want him to, uh, you see what he did? Anytime he, uh, the kid moves his head pretty good, and anytime Rios goes to the body, he's always connected. The kid has come out with a very rough tactics. He's not a clean fighter, neither. Very confident. He came on strong early. Will that hurt him? This is a 12-round fight. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But the Carlos Rios is used to about 12-round fight. You know, Cobrita Soto, Floyd Mayweather, but we had to get him this guy, this guy slow down a little bit. You know. There was a warning to Rios about his head, I believe, from the referee. Is, is Carlos using his head in this fight? Well, no, I think the other way around, the other guy was the one who started initiating all those things, and then, of course, we told knew, him, Retali, Retali. I knew that was going to happen. It's always Retali. Hey, hey, what are you going to do the next few rounds? Well, we're going to keep, we're going to keep going to the body. We're going to keep going to the body for at least the next two rounds, and then see what happens. When are you going to let him lose? In about a couple of rounds. A couple of rounds. We're going to be looking for that. They want more aggression from him in a couple of rounds. Not quite yet. Back over to you, Rich. All right, tough sometimes to get the aggression against the aggressor like Robbie Peden right here. Rios did a good job right there, though, of going to the body as he wound up with a one-two going to each side of the body of Robbie Peden. So he's trying to do what Miguel Diaz uh, is telling him to do. He's gone to the body on two occasions since the interview with Miguel Diaz. And Rios now beginning to bounce back. Showing the first signs of life, it seems to me, in this fight. Sean Rios has done much better. Yeah, still a lot of pressure though. He's still waiting for for Pete to slow down a little bit. They don't want to. They don't want to drop the big bombs right here. You don't wait until Pete slows down and then you pick it up. Nice work, really, from Carlos Rios. He's staying in this fight and he's keeping it close. All right, so Rios with a better round here in round four. Is it a turning of the tide? We will find out when our main event continues here on Fox Sports Now. And we begin round number five here of a 12-rounder. This for the NABF 130-pound championship. It's Robbie Peden in the black trunks. Carlos Rios, blue trunks, the gold trim. First three rounds, very strong for Peden. Rios kind of bounced back a little bit in round number four. The round was much closer and hoping now to perhaps pick up a little bit of momentum as Rios gets a warning from uh, Vic Dracula. Let's go into the corner now with Sean O'Grady, uh, the corner of Robbie Peden, and find out how they're looking at the fight. Sean? Thanks, Rich. Over here with Roger Bloodworth. Roger, what do you see at this point? Well, this guy's very awkward, and he's strong. He's had a lot of fights. He's using his head a lot. So Robbie's got to be cautious. I just want him to bust him up for a few more rounds before we get real aggressive. His eyes are starting to swell up, so I, I told him, I said, just keep boxing him, let his face swell a little bit more before we try, any, try anything. Outstanding instructions. Do you think Robbie has spent all of his money in those early rounds? No. no he's no. got plenty of gas left. Yeah, he's plenty. Uh, what are you going to do the next couple of rounds we're going to look for? We're just going to keep working off, working off the jab, John. You know, the, basic, the uh, basics win fights. And uh, if he keeps that jab in his face, he's, this other guy's face is going to close up real good in about two or three more rounds, and then he should be able to drop combinations behind it. So really, you're trying to calm down, Robbie. You're not trying to get him in a hurry. No, I don't want him in a hurry. I, I, that's nice defense. If he gets in a hurry, he gets in the other guy's game. Boy, that's good. I want you in my corner. Man, what a nice job. You know, that's what it is, too, Rich. You just got to calm. Just take your time. It's a matter of time now. Back over to you. All right, thanks. Roger Bloodworth with the instructions to Peden to uh, go ahead and box. Take it easy here in round number five. And I think he's doing a pretty good job of that. Peden has a lot of skills. He didn't doesn't necessarily always show them if he comes out and he's looking to brawl and looking to get his man out of there in a hurry. Look, 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 
But as you can see, defensively, he's managed to avoid a lot of the blows of Rios here in this round. And it did a nice job of turning Rios around. And Rios' eye beginning to become a factor, it would look like, that right eye. You know what, Rich, that is why Rios cannot wait a couple of rounds to get started. You know, you, we talked to his corner, Miguel Diaz said, we're, we're going to start him in a couple of rounds. You can't do that. This fight may be over. If he swells up like that, this fight will be stopped. Carlos Rios, 28 years old. Heaton, 26. Rios does a nice job working to the body and then going to the head. Wild swinging punches from Carlos Rios. Yeah, he's getting involved in the fight a little bit more. Although Keaton may be allowing it a little too because of his instructions from Roger Bullworth to Bloodworth to take his time and to use the jab. Box a little here, and that's what happened in round number five. Well, the bomber, Robbie Peden, catching some of those shots, but wilding around. Boy, it's hard to hit. Look at the movement from him from the waist up. But when you move like that, the, the old saying is, lock and counter, or make your opponent miss, and then counter. No counter from Peden. Well, Rios didn't miss on that one. He landed that right hand to the head of Peden. Peden, though, as you heard him say earlier, was, as he told Sean yesterday, is he feels he's a complete package. As a, as a fighter, and that would include some defensive skills, too. You know, he is. He's very good. Seeing him these first six rounds, he is very good. He's got a lot of skills and a lot of uh, confidence, not only in himself, but also in his corner. You know, to get a kid to listen to the corner and follow instructions is extremely hard, and that's what he's doing. That's uh, called concentration. It's like rock'em, sock'em robots. The corner should control the fight. And when you got somebody over there like a Roger Bloodworth, even Kim, Kevin Barry, you really realize the importance of that corner. No oh, knockdown. Yeah. Swinging punch. Yeah. Back of the head. <laughs> Rios is a free swinger. Heaton seems to be studying Rios a little bit more now before he launches an attack. That's what he needed. He could not do that without this kind of fight. You got to look at your opponent, look at everything, look at the advantages and the disadvantages of whatever it is you're doing. Now he's studying his opponent. That's, that's what you need to take the next step. He tried to bomb him out of there early and he had some good success, but he wasn't successful in bombing him out. And now it's settled a bit more into a conventional match. Plan B. Plan B. You go for the early KO. If you can't get it, you settle down and try to set your opponent up and then rally on Watch him again. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. And also, he wants to Watch frustrate Rios. He wants to make him think that every time I reach to throw a punch, I get tagged. Rios has to get back on that body attack. You gotta take some of that speed away from somebody like Peter. Peter too fast, hands down around his waist. Forget that head, it's hard to hit. If you miss the head, go to the body. So Robbie Peden hoping to become the latest in a growing presence of Australian fighters. Of course, uh, Costa Zoo has turned into a great professional and world champion. Costa Zoo's manager, by the way, Vlad Wharton, is here in attendance tonight watching his uh, uh, countrymen. And uh, Kevin Kelly, we saw him make a very spirited bid for a championship against David Reed. And now Robbie Peden, the newest to come into the limelight. End of round six. A bit more control than what has sometimes been a very wild fight. All right, this is round seven. Remember, it's scheduled for 12. And they have 130-pound title on the line. Carlos Rios in the blue trunks. Robbie Peden in the black trunks with white trim. Remember that Rios has lost only to world champions. Cesar Soto, Luisito Espinosa, and Floyd Mayweather. Went the distance with Mayweather last year, and not too many guys are doing that nowadays. The only time stopped against Espinosa. That fight back in December of 1997. He said he was stopped on cuts. That for the WBC title. But two championship fights. That one and then the Mayweather fight. Both for the WBC championship. Keaton trying to get his jab to work to some effect now. 
Rios, a very unorthodox guy. Both these guys throwing a pretty high volume of punches. Break clean, break clean. Right now, and uh, you know, fairly close in terms of just numbers there, Sean. Although Rios a little bit more accurate. You have all that wild swinging. Finally getting, slowing off the swing and start trying to make some straight punches. You really got to focus to your opponent, especially when he's moving like Peden. Do you like to see Peden moving like this? Lateral movement using the ring? Very effective. Jab out, or would, is he, would he be better off just as a straight ahead ball? Very effective this way. You move that head. You know, he looks an awful lot like Costa Zoo. And moving from the waist up, I love that movement in any kind of fighter. Move from the waist up, it doesn't take much energy, but he's really effective. Oh, downstairs, but upstairs come Peden. When you reach for the body, you got to keep your chin protected. Good body punch there by Peden as he uh, worked Rios up against the ropes. Ooh, both fighters trade punches on the inside. You got to fight inside. You can't hold on. This is what Rios has been waiting for, and he's the one tying up. Each of these guys seems to still have plenty in the tank right now as Rios comes forward and tries to work the left hook to the body. They're asking for body punches from Carlos. One of the things that makes Rios such a <laughs> difficult guy to fight is simply that he's just so unorthodox. I mean, it's, it's a tough guy to, to figure out how to fight. He doesn't come at you conventionally. You really have to change, too, and, and when you're facing him because of the headbutts. When he comes in, when he's swinging wild, he runs his, his head right into your face. So then you got to alter your style a little bit to keep from getting hit with that. And then his punches, too. Very tough. Carlos Rios, they're asking for the right hand. And we come to the end now of round seven. Welcome back to the New Frontier Hotel Event Center. You're watching a 12 round NABF 130 pound title bout between Robbie Peden from Australia in the black trunks, Carlos Rios from Argentina in the blue trunks with a gold trim. I'm Rich Morata along with Sean O'Grady ringside at this fight. An interesting fight. Peden looked like he might just blow Rios right out of the ring in the first couple of rounds, but Rios got himself into the fight beginning in the third round and is still right there and still swinging. But it is Peden who's really kind of walking away with this match. You know, in this fight, Robbie Peden wanted to put his name in headlines like a Floyd Mayweather, like a Luisito Espinosa. You know, those are the only fighters that, that have beaten somebody. Cesar Soto also beaten somebody like a Carlos Rios. Peden wants to be thought of in that in that kind of environment, those, those kind of fighters. Well, the, there's some money to be made in the 130 pound division and, and Peden feels he belongs with the with the elite and he'd like to take on some of these champions. We have Peden out in front uh, and comfortably at this point. How do you think? Do you think Peden really is already amongst the elite? He thinks so, but I mean, when you're talking uh, guys like uh, Floyd Mayweather, Diego Corrales, uh, Robert Garcia, there's a whole slew of pretty good fighters in that 130 pound division. Yeah, your career advances in stages, and this is a stage that he's going through. He has to go through this kind of stage to gain the experience that is extremely valuable when you take that next step up. Yeah, he wants to be thought of with names like Luisito Espinosa, like Cesar Soto, like Mayweather. But in order to not only be thought of and to get those kind of fights, you have to fight them and win against the fighters like Carlos Rios. Well, it's all a learning process. And right now, Peden is learning you know how to go 12 rounds how to he's learning how to get hit how on to the get, break get out of the way how to adapt <laughs> how to get out of those the head the, the head coming forward from carlos rios who gets a point taken away you know that's just his style that's the way he fights he is a rough fighter he comes in with his head with elbows with, he's just a tough kid Santa Fe, argentina Peden, eight, three, and two with 30 knockouts. I think Peden a little angry here. He's been uh, headbutted and uh, hit on the break in this round, so I think that's got his juices flowing here a little bit now. He seemed angry when he came back from that. Peden 
short with the left and the right. Rios trying to make him pay for that mistake. What Rios does is he gets too close. Watch how close he goes in. He smothers his own punches. If he could let his arms out, extend his arms a bit, he'd be much more effective. Outstanding instructions from Roger Bloodworth. You know, step around him. Back him up if you can. You know, Sean, why don't you go ahead and explain what he's referring to when he's talking about stepping around the fighter. You watch the lateral movement from Peden that we talked about earlier. He, he walks around his opponent, gets the angle on him, and then he tries to back him up, as opposed to running right straight forward. If he went right straight forward, he would catch the top of Rios' head and bang his head into Rios' head. They don't want him to do that. They want him to get the angle and then advance. This is round nine of a scheduled 12 rounder. Remember the NABF 130 pound title is on the line. That's a North American championship, part of the WBC. You have Robbie Peden with only 15 fights, taking on a veteran of over 50 fights, Carlos Rios, who fought for the world title twice. And Peden acquitting himself uh, very well. Earlier tonight, we had a, a very similar situation with Masolino Masoy, who had 14 fights and was undefeated, taking on a guy who had fought uh, a large amount of fights in Santiago Samaniego and once for the world championship. But in that case, it was too big a step up for him, at least right now, Samaniego prevailed. And Masoy came into that fight, like this fight with Robbie Peden, a great deal of confidence that uh, Bubble was burst in that fifth round. Samaniego really poured it on, and Masoy could not go on. The left hook from Rios. Peden looks to be in, in better shape. He's confident, he's relaxed here, he's, he's really having fun in this fight. You know, and we saw it with Masoi, we saw it in his legs. All of a sudden, the energy just zapped out of him. We haven't seen that in Robbie Peden. Now he looks very strong and very fit, does Peden. And he, he's willing to hot dog a little bit here with uh, Rios. He feels like he's in control. Rios is eye, underneath the eye. You see a blackening there as that swelling continues underneath the right eye. He has taken a lot of shots. Pete really needs to zero in on that too, that swelling. You zero in on it and you really go for it. Try to swell your opponent's eye up. Try to use that as a bullseye. For Rios, like he was doing earlier, and, and, and he was effective going to the body first and then working his way up to the head. You can't hit a fighter like Peden with headshots alone. You gotta start off downstairs and then go up. Peden displaying a number of different styles. Sometimes he's on the move, sometimes he's up on his toes, sometimes he's right in your face. Two exchanging punches there. And a lot of times Rios will come at you and he'll just clamp down on your arm. Okay, into the final 10 seconds now, round number nine. Three rounds to go so to mix it up. We come to the end of the ninth round. Welcome back on Fight Time on Fox Sports Net at the New Frontier Casino, back in the event center here in Las Vegas, Nevada. You see this NABF 130 pound championship fight. Robbie Peden in the black trunks from Australia. Carlos Rios of Argentina in the blue trunks with his back to you. Interesting fight. Peden came out, seemed to build a big lead very early. Rios bounced back after a while, but now Peden assuming control again, but with a different style than he used in the early round. Rios didn't, is the man coming forward now. And in the corner of Rios is Sean O'Grady. Sean, what's going on? I'm over here with Miguel Diaz, Rich. Miguel, you, you kind of like what you see here. What's happening? Well, he changed. We, like I told you before, we changed it from the next couple of rounds, and the other kid, he's not used to about this. He used to about knock people out in the first, second, third round. Now he got a, a veteran in front of him, and the kid lose the composure already. He, he left him since the fourth round. But Miguel, you, you know the score. You know the story here. I mean, Rios has to go for the KO. Oh yeah, well he had to. Well, he tried. He's kind of a, a little, uh, a little 
natural fighter. He's kind of a, a guy that has already been in the toughest fight. You know, he don't, he don't throw the punches properly, but at least he's trying. He's throwing punches. I made the other kid miss. He is trying and a tough kid, but do you think he's moving in too close? Well, that is what we want. We want, we want him to be close. The distance is for the other kid. So if he gets in there, he's got a punch, though. There we go. All right, what are you going to show me the last two rounds? I thought we won the two rounds. I thought we won the last two rounds. You gotta have them. You need those last two. Even at that, I don't think you can win this fight. Back over to Rich. All right, well, I thought I saw during uh, that conversation Rios walk in on the inside to a right hand from Pete that seemed to do some damage. Both of his eyes showing the war wounds that he is undergoing tonight, Carlos Rios. Peden keeping it at long range here, hands down, utilizing the jab. Rios trying to use his unorthodox style to his advantage, but he's running into a lot of punches, it seems like, in this round. Now, really, in a sense of urgency, he realizes what he has to do. Rios has to put the pressure on, and he's got to punch when he works his way in. He gets all the way in there, and then he stops punching. Right now, Peden, you know, Peden is such control. He's in good shape. He's relaxed. He's calm. Even looking over the corner of Rios to find out what they're going to do. There you see Peden forcing Rios to miss. Rios still trying, still coming forward, still throwing wild punches. As always, a free swinger. Even his trainer, Miguel Diaz, says he doesn't always throw punches correctly, but he's still throwing them as we come to the end of round 10. And here is Robbie Peden keeping the pressure on Lee, this best shot of the night. Big uppercut while Rios running in. You know, with Rios now, he's fighting out of desperation. He's going to be coming right at you. You got to use those uppercuts, and that's a nice move from Robbie Peden. Well, Robbie Peden looks like a fighter with more than 15 fights. Very calm and relying on his, the expertise of his corner. Another right hand from Peden as Rios came in wildly. Seems to me that the, with the variety of styles that Peden has showed, that's going to really work to his advantage in the future. He's going to be able to adjust in fights, uh, Sean, and do something. If something's not working, he's going to be able to adjust and go to something else. It's so vital. I see fighters who describe themselves as a boxer puncher or sometimes a boxer brawler, sometimes a mover boxer, and, and it's great to see that because you have to have an adapting style. There's a look at your card, Rich. You really got it. Peden pulling away in this fight. And I, I agree with you. Uh, I think the only shot that Rios has is a big knockout blow. Only 30 KOs and his 48 wins. Not really known as a knockout artist. Well, he's trying. I'll he's tell you that. He's last... still throwing a lot of punches. And a pretty good left hook to the body there, did Rios. Last knockout back in May of 1997. Peden is uh, utilizing mostly punches to the body. Rios, excuse me, to the head, while uh, Rios is going to the body more than is Peden. Now that's important, and that's vital in 12 round fights. You can go to the body early to build up a good body attack in the early rounds. In the late rounds, you go for the KO, right to the chin, every punch to the chin. Now, if you're using body shots to set up a chin shot, that's a different story. And we saw Carlos Rios do that in those middle rounds. He'd start off with the body and then work his way up. But here, you got to go for the KO. Something to remember here, too, is that Peden, as we mentioned earlier in the fight, never has been beyond eight rounds in a fight, uh, Sean. And he's handling the jump up to 12 rounds with, with no problem here tonight. Very impressive. Really very impressive. Most fighters burn themselves out early, and I thought that we may see that tonight because of that fast start from Peden. But he really slowed it down those middle rounds and really kind of coasted while he got his breath and really showed a lot of experience. A lot of savvy in those middle rounds. Rios having a pretty good round here. Peden mostly just uh, taking the round off as far as offense is concerned. Rios is having one of his very best rounds of the fight. Just from sheer aggression. Hasn't landed anything particularly significant, but he's throwing more punches and landing more than his Peden here in round number 11. 
So there's three minutes to go in this fight. Let's listen in and hear what the fighters are being told. Well, they still have to work on the eye as well as tell the fighter what to do. Final round, make it a good one. Would you tell the final round? Come around the side. Watch the kidney punches. That's Vic Vacula, the referee over there. Watch the kidney punches in this final round. Fighting out of desperation, he's going to be moving in. All right, clumsy, hard to fight. Just keep stepping around him. Three minutes. Got to keep that left hand going. You can't step around and do nothing though. All right. Gosh, isn't that great? Nice deep breath. This is it. Isn't that great? Roger Bloodworth with some outstanding corner work. See how calm his voice is? You want to calm your fighter down? You don't want to get him fired up. He's way ahead in this fight. Don't get him fired up where he rushes in and gets tagged with something. Really calm him down. You know, you're doing fine. Use the jab. Move your head. Don't let him catch you. Don't get him ex an exciting exchange. What he wants to do now is just pick him apart from the outside. You know Rios is going to be coming in. So the 12th and final round is now underway. And one thing I think Bloodworth uh, told him also, I'm oh. not sure what this point deduction is for the kidney punch. Well, he told him, he told him between rounds, you all heard it here, when Dracula went over to the corner to watch the kidney punch, and uh, he knocked him a point on that. Hard for, for uh, Rios not to throw that kidney punch because he's so wild with his shots. See how he swings that punch around? I would like to see him throw straighter punches. You know, and occasionally, yeah. Wild swinging punches work sometimes, but not all the time. And we talked about the adaptability of fighters. I'd like to see that from him. Pete oh as well ahead with this uh, final round. Well, so far, Rio's having a pretty good round, but even if he wins it now, he's not going to get credit for it. He's probably a draw unless he can score a knockdown. Yeah, fine job on the cards tonight, by the way, Rich. That's exactly how I saw it, too. Pete knows what the score is. He knows he's got to keep from getting tagged, and he has to get through this fight, just maintain his lead. Well, that's one thing Bloodworth told him there between rounds. He said, uh, don't just step around and do nothing. Step around sure. and do something. Oh, I thought so in that good. 11th round, he, that's what he was doing, nothing, uh, through most of the round. Even though Peyton feels he's in control. Roger is so good, but a fighter must rely on somebody like a Roger Bloodworth. He must rely on the corner because they can see the total picture. You can't see when you're in there fighting. You're too busy. Hold it. Right. It was almost right. comical how calm he was trying to be when Andrew uh, oh, put the right hand oh, oh, man. by uh, Robbie Peden. That one rocked Rios back into the ropes. Watch out, watch out. In that last fight with Andrew Galata, when Galata fought Michael Grant, Bloodworth specifically was trying to be very calm because Galata, of course, is an extremely excitable guy in the ring. And he thought they had it completely under control, but as often happens with Galata, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to end up the winner, even if he is in control. He may have landed his most uh, damaging punch of the fight here in the last round. Yeah, good combination. For him. Oh, look at that shot. That snapped the head back of Rios. Wow, what a punch. So it actually might be Rios here who is uh, running out of gas in the final minutes of this fight and not Robbie Peden who'd never been beyond eight rounds. Yeah, in this fight, it looked like Peden was the wily veteran. So there it is. 12 rounds in the books. Robbie Peden convinced he has won the fight. Carlos Rios with a long walk across the ring to uh, congratulate his the brass in the corner of his opponent. Rios came in here trying, but as you can see, he got busted up. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Cindy Barton scores them out 115 to 111 in favor of Carlos Rios. Judge at ringside, Vince Delgado scores them out 114 to 112 in favor of Robbie Peden. Judge at ringside, Dave Moretti sees them out at 115 to 111 in favor of the winner. And now the NABF Super Featherweight Champion, Robbie the Bomber Peden.
Well, I have to admit I'm very surprised that that fight went to a split decision. Two judges had uh, Robbie Peden fairly comfortably ahead. We had uh, Peden up, uh, I believe it was 117, 110 at the uh, at the end of the fight. But uh, nonetheless, Carlos Rios did get the vote of one judge, and it's a split decision loss. So uh, Sean O'Grady has climbed up into the ring to talk to the new champion. Let's find out his thoughts, Sean. Robbie Peden, congratulations. When they said split decision, were you worried? Uh, not really. I thought I, no, I won the fight pretty easy. Letting get a few rounds, probably the ninth, the tenth, and probably the eighth. But um, I thought I controlled the fight and come back to the end, and I, I won it convincingly, you know. You controlled this fight. I thought you won it convincingly. But what did you need out of this fight that you got tonight? Uh, be more professional. You know, I, I dropped my hands a bit too much. I, like an amateur, my coach will go back to the drawing board and hopefully get another fight. You yeah. know what? Your corner really won this fight for you tonight. You know yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Well, how, did they, how did they win it? I'm um, just told me to stay on my jab and stick yeah. to my game plan, you know. And I, I, know, I know I lapsed in concentration, so I would go back to the gym, you know, take the drawing board and start again. Yeah, okay. We're getting back to the drawing board now with the title belt, though, right? Yeah, no, yeah it's right. pretty good. It's pretty All good. All right, Robbie Peden, he gets the victory tonight. He gets the title belt, and uh, he is very excited. Rich, he's, I guess, a good kid. So, Robbie Peden is the champion. Earlier tonight, we saw Santiago Samaniego get a, a big win for uh, him as he uh, scored an upset victory over undefeated Masolino Masoy. And we saw Glenn Robinson shockingly knocked out by Jesus Ruiz. And then, of course, Robbie Peden getting the championship that he wanted. Remember to join us each and every Sunday on Fox Sports Net for Sunday Night Fights. Check your local listings. Interesting note, they're doing the same thing uh, as last week, Dennis, the Sydney Swans players, unlike uh, a lot of teams who put two players... Good value, not bad value, then this is the only label you need to look out for. Jeans West fits best. Hi. The moment you've all been waiting for championship boxing comes to Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, those in attendance and across the globe, fight fans, the moment you've all been waiting for, brought to you by Glenn Wheatley's Talent Works, Tony Carandona Blaster Promotions, Blue Corner Promotions in association with Goosen Tutor. Tonight, the vacant IBF Super Featherweight title Scheduled for 12 or 3 minute rounds. Who will be the 126 pound champion? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first.